Hello, my name is Rachel, and since I got this Ninja Foodie, I've actually enjoyed, started enjoying cooking again. <laughs> so welcome to another episode of Domestigoth, where I try new recipes in my Ninja Foodie, and I bring you along with me. So today what we're going to be attempting to make is Zuppa Toscano. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Olive Garden and had their you know, lunch special, like the never-ending soup and salad. My favorite soup with that is their Zuppa Toscano, which is just like a, a sausage, kale, and potato soup. So what I did was I read a whole bunch of recipes um, online uh, for both just the regular in a pot version and also for pressure cooker versions, because obviously I'm making it in the pressure cooker. And just like those AI memes, <laughs> We had our AI read all of these recipes, and this is what they came up with. Only hopefully my version will come out tasty and not just hilarious. <laughs> so, I guess let's just get started with this Zuppa Toscano. I've already pre-prepared all of my ingredients. First, there is a whole bunch of Italian sausage. Now, I was only going to go to the one grocery store, and they didn't have actual Italian sausage. So, I am substituting these chicken Italian flavored sausages. Um, it's probably not going to be as good as if I had found real Italian sausage and if, I, and if this comes out okay the next time I make it I will definitely go search for real Italian sausage but I, like I said I didn't feel like going to more than just the one grocery store so I was at Lidl's mercy as far as ingredients. <laughs> and I did use a package and a half of these. Um, I felt like it was getting to be just way too much, so I didn't do the two full packages. Uh, and I did remove the casings before chopping them up. And then I have roughly two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. There's going to be a whole bunch of chicken broth. This is a one onion finely diced and roughly two tablespoons of minced garlic. I didn't have any fresh garlic cloves, so I just used uh, minced garlic that I had. I think this was four golden potatoes, maybe five. I, I didn't really keep track. I just used up what I had left in one of my bags of potatoes. Rather than doing chunks of potato, I'm doing like these little slices uh, because I feel like that's what I remember is in the Zuppa Toscano at Olive Garden, and I know I like the, the texture of that soup, so I thought that would give me hopefully something similar. This is a one bunch of kale, de-stemmed and chopped. Probably could have saved myself a lot of time if I had just bought like bagged salad kale, you know, that's ready to, ready to cook, but I, it was a lot cheaper to buy the bunch, and then I just had to cut the stems out of it, and then of course dice it. And I think that's all of my ingredients. Uh, except for some olive oil. So let's get started. So our first step of course is going to be to turn it on and we're going to start by sauteing our sausage. So we choose a sear saute. We're going to do high. And there's no time for sear saute. And we're going to hit start and I'm going to put in a splash of olive oil. Okay, so I have let the pan heat up for just a few minutes and now we're gonna brown our sausage. It's a lot of sausage. I'm wondering if just one pack would have been enough. It's gonna be meaty. <laughs> we're gonna have some meaty soup. <laughs> So I've browned the sausage for several minutes and I've also diced it up a little bit more from the chunks that it was cut into because from what I remember the texture of the sausage in the Olive Garden version of the soup was crumbly as opposed to chunky. Of course it's been two years since I've been to Olive Garden so my memory could be faulty <laughs> but that's just how I remember it. So next now that we have our sausage nice and brown. I'm going to add in my two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, my onion and garlic. And that was one small red onion diced and roughly two tablespoons of minced garlic. Now I think if I had used real Italian sausage there would have been a lot more 
grease in here and I might have needed to drain some of that grease out but because I was just using these chicken sausages I didn't really have that much grease in here so what little grease was in there I just left in because I thought it would add nice flavor to the finished product now I'm going to cook this until my onions are translucent I'm back my onions are translucent my sausage is nice and crumbled everything is smelling really good so I'm actually going to turn off the sear saute because next we're going to get it ready for pressure cooking and next we're going to put in six cups of chicken broth and I actually went just a little over here I'm doing three and a half cups why not extra half a cup I won't hurt anything I'm going to put in some salt and pepper And I'm using my sea salt with herbs. And I'm adding my potatoes. You know what? There's not a lot of chicken broth left in here. Probably another half cup. I'm just going to dump it in here because might as well use it up. And next, we're going to pressure cook it. So I gotta put on the pressure cook lid. We line up our little arrows. We tighten and make sure this little gauge in the back is over on seal. Show you a little gauge back here. Make sure this gauge right here is over to seal. And then we're going to choose pressure, high, five minutes. Now this will actually take closer to 15 to 20 minutes because it does take at least 10 minutes for that pressure to build. So let's hit start. Our pressure cooker cycle has finished. So now we're going to do the quick release. And that can take like a minute or two, so I'll bring you back. So that actually took about, I'd say three or four minutes, but our little silver, I don't know if you can see it from there, but our little silver pressure gauge has dropped back down, which means it is safe to open the lid. And remember to always lift away from yourself so you don't get splashed with anything. Still boiling. The potatoes are soft. We're not quite done yet though. So our next step is we are going to add in the kale. We just stir the kale in until it wilts. And just like the sausage, I might have overdone the kale a little bit. But I guess you can never have too many ingredients. <laughs> I do like a nice thick, chunky soup. Okay, I think we've got a decent wilt going there on that kale. And there's one last step. And we're going to add half and half. Because I keep adding a little, little extra, I think one and three quarters cup will do us good here. You can see nice and creamy there. Try just a little bit of the broth, see if I need any more salt and pepper. I think that's actually pretty good, just the way it is. So the only step left is to eat it. <laughs> I'd have to say the only thing with cooking in the, <laughs> in the Ninja Foodie 
is I live alone <laughs> and then I have like all of this food. <laughs> so I'll be eating this for a week and I'm probably going to freeze some. It's always nice to thaw some out at a later date after, you know, because I'll probably be tired of eating this in a couple days. But let's try our soup. Get a little bit of everything in here. Some potatoes, some kale, some sausage, broth. I think it's really good. I think the only thing that would make it better is if I had actual Italian sausage instead of these chicken Italian sausages. But the chicken Italian sausage still works. I think it's just a, got a touch of spice to it and it tastes really good. So thank you so much for joining me while I made Zuppa Toscano in the Ninja for the first time. I think it was another success. And if you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, feel free to give me a thumbs down, but leave some constructive criticism in the comments below so that I can improve. And please subscribe to the channel. And I hope everyone is just having a wonderful day and staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world that we are living in. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye!